Yeah, if anybody else has other questions. Uh, we're, we're okay. What I did is I took the end off and then I took a marker and I just marked the uh, edge around here so I can so I can see where the edge is easily. Um, okay. So what I did, what I'm going to do now is uh, turn the outside and what I want it to look like is something like this. Oh, there we go. So I want to get the back of it. So it's, uh, so I'm going to get the back of it so that um, um, we get the spoon out the outside of the spoon as well. So let's start doing that. I'm going to use a roughing gouge. I, I like this uh, uh, Thompson roughing gouge. It's a, a, a Mark St. Ledger design. And I really like this. This I use this for almost everything when I'm doing roughing on spindles. Now what I'm going to do is go close to the line. I don't want to get too close to the line. I want to get within about maybe a quarter to three eighths of an inch on most of it. So I'll just start turning here. And again, I forgot my face shield. Starting out here so I get better support. A little bit faster, maybe. You have to be really careful because you have these bolts flying around right next to where you're turning, so you get to be aware of that. Can you see the black marks? I can see them pretty well here. No. I don't know from the angle of camera is whether you can see them or not. It doesn't look like it. Yeah, I guess you can. Yeah. But anyway, that's why I can just kind of do this without worrying about going too far. Of course, if I cut out the black mark, then I just cut it in two because uh, that means I'm at the same place as the hollowing. Okay, let's stop and see what it looks like. Okay, so I need to I need to cut some more out up here in front and all the way around here. I'd like that to be a quarter to three eighths of an inch there. So I've got a little ways to go yet. Probably hear a little bit of vibration there. I don't want to be too aggressive. Let me start taking some off back here now. Okay, let's look and see what that looks like now. Okay, this is getting pretty close to where I want it. Yeah, I'd stop there. I can feel the thickness and it feels pretty good. That looks pretty good. Um, so that's all I need to do using this jig. Um, one thing I wanna check and the next jig I'm going to be using will be this one. Well, let's see, here we go. And it's got these two slots in. And I want to make sure these slots 
We'll fit in the end there. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay, should be fine. All right, so now I'm going to take it off of this jig, take the boards off. So I need to undo the bolts. And then pull these out. That's what it looks like. So I still have some more work to do before I get a spoon. So the next step is um, I mark, from this mark, I mark two lines here, an inch apart, centered. Now I centered on, on the tail end, I just centered on the board. Up on this end, I center it for where this uh, bowl part is centered. So I maybe make a mark here where I think the center is. And then um, I draw a line from the center of here to the center of there, say it's about there. And then I measure half inch each way, draw lines, take it to the bandsaw. I cut here, 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 here. And then I take a little bit there. So what it looks like then, is this, okay? And so that's the first step. So what's nice about this is that after you cut those, you get two pieces that are good for pin blanks. I use them to make animals. I make little uh, refrigerator magnets that look like mice or pigs or penguins or, thing, or snowmen. And so actually when I buy a board, uh, the board pays for itself with just these scrap pieces from the spoons. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just use this piece that I've already done. Um, so I don't have to use the bandsaw tonight. So we can take this jig off now. And what I'm gonna use now is I'm gonna use this uh, half inch uh, spur drive, go in the head. And then I'm gonna use, uh, here it is, the special uh, piece that I've made to go in the tail. And basically it has two slots in it. It has a slot where this, this one that's near the center, so that one side of the slot is on the center of this cylinder. The other one is out, you can make it an eighth of an inch or so. I have it a little more than an eighth. And then the other slot is one, the center of that slot is one half inch from the center of the um, cylinder. <coughs> and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. And this goes in the tailstock. Now, I'm really fortunate to be working at Steve's shop because it's easy to get the tail stock up. There it is. So let's see here. Let me pull this in so it can be seen. So what I'm going to do is mount the spoon basically centered on the headstock end. Although I like to make it just a little bit below the center, and I'll explain why in a minute, but centered left and right, maybe just a little bit below the center. It could be right at the center, but definitely you don't want it above the center. And then here, I'm going to attach it to the top slot, the one that's farthest from the center. Okay, so it just goes in that slot. I'll tighten it up. Doesn't have to be real tight, but you have to make it snug. Okay, now I want to make sure I have it centered. So the simplest way to do that, that I've found is, um, I put my finger here, and when it just touches, it should just touch on the other side. It's pretty close. Maybe it could be toward me just a tiny bit. Let's try that and see what that's like. 
just barely touches, just barely touches. That's good enough. Okay, now what I wanna do, the problem with this is the thickness is right. I, I like the thickness, but over here, that's way too thick on top. And that's because when you measure thickness, you're measuring along a radius, which is at an angle to this. So it's gonna be thicker here than what, it, than what you'd feel it when you feel your fingers on it. So I need to get closer to that line. I still can't touch that line. I guess I could touch the line, but I don't want to because I wanna have a little bit of a rounding on the top here. I'll have to round it off with a little bit of sandpaper when I'm done. So let's see how this looks. Okay. And again, I can see the black line. Is that visible on the screen there? Yeah, you can see it, I think, at least part of it. Yeah, we can see it, Neil. Okay, so I'm gonna start turning and I'm gonna just, just try to get closer to the black line. Went a little faster than that. So I'm doing a lot of air turning. Actually, I don't see it real well either now. Let's see how it looks here. Okay, we're getting close. This is about where I want it here. But I can take off more here and I can take off a little bit more back in this area. I have to be careful. And I want to maybe talk a little bit about this. So this is the second way I got it chalked. I'm going to check it one more time. And I want to make sure that here, I don't make it too thin. If it gets too thin here, then the handle's not going to be strong enough or I won't be able to get a good handle. But I want to take some of this off, but I don't want to take too much of it off. So let's do that. I'm kind of going along, not on the line, but kind of parallel with the black line. And then when I get to the end, I start going out straight. Let's see how that's looking now. Okay, that's pretty good. I wanna get, I don't know if you can see that, there's kind of a hump there right in here. So I'm gonna get some more out here. So that means right in here, I need to cut some more out. Okay, let's look at it one more time and then we'll be pretty close, I think. This looks pretty good on this. I'm gonna cut some more out up here. I'll use the spindle gouge to do that. Here, that's not too bad. I think I can live with that. Um, notice the back's not looking good and notice that I've got this little hump here. So I will try to get that out. So that's just about right there. Know, can you see there's a little hump there? I get it turned just right. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I can see it. We can see it. Okay. Let's see what that, oh, I'll do, go ahead and do the spindle gouge on this end. And I'll get that up closer to the tail, hold, things holding the tail. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, 
Okay, I still got that. Got to go in a little bit more. Yeah, I'm going to get that out. Um, one thing is you got to be careful when you're doing this. There's, it's kind of high right here, and I don't want to take too much more out of that or else I'll get it too thin up in here. So I just want to be kind of careful there. See if that's better. Okay, that's close enough. Uh, I'll have to do some sanding in the end and that should take that out. So next thing is I mount it at the next slot. Now this slot, I wanna make it so that the center of the lathe, where the lathe, the axis of the lathe is, is inside the spoon now. So that means that the top of the spoon should be on the edge of the slot that's not in the center. So it's the bottom of the spoon that's up against the uh, part of the slot that's on the center of the cylinder there. Now again, I wanna make sure it's centered. That's pretty good. So I'll go with that. And now this is a little tricky here because that's, this is when we're doing the transition from the spoon part to the handle part. Um, so, you got to keep your eye on that black line. You don't want to cut across the black line, but you want to get kind of close. Let me take some off here. pretty close to where I want it there. Okay, you can see I've got a little bit of a, let's see here, how do I turn it so you can see it? So you can see the profile. Can you see that there's a little bit of a hump here? Yep, we here can see it's it. pretty good, still flat on top. So I'm gonna have to take some more off here to make it so it's round. So I think I can fix that a little bit better. So I'm gonna take some more off up here and the scoop part just, just at the end of the suit scoop part. And then go around the corner, take a little more of that off. Okay, so let's see what that looks like now. That looks pretty good. Notice that we've got these ridges. You can probably see that ridge if I get it turned just right. There's a ridge here, there's a ridge down here. Um, that's gonna be sanded out, so that's gonna be fine. Up here, it's not perfect. It's gonna be sanded more too, so that sh that'll look nice when it's done. So now I'm gonna just work on the handle part. I'm gonna not gonna worry about the scoop part now at all. So if you've made a spatula or something, this is just like making a spatula now. To do is taper it a little bit. So I, I want it thin here and then I thicken a little bit as it, as it goes. On the end here, I like it to be about five eighths of an inch. The um, spur drive is a half inch, so I can kind of judge what a five eighths an inch uh, diameter looks like based on the spur drive.
That's not too bad. Okay, I want to take a look at this and see if we're ready to sand it and part it off. Yeah, that looks pretty good, I think.